Well, first apologies, but I've been exhausted and pulled all over the place due to life stuff. So I wanted to get this out earlier, but there was a lot happening and I had to make a choice between either Tommy Scoville or Defender of Ants. I decided on Defender of Ants because Tommy's uh, response to the charges that he's kind of a fraud was a bizarre response. So we'll we'll get to that in due time. So let's deal with Defender of Ants and his um attempt to reformulate his failure. So if you've kept up with Scotty Boy, he's been organizing a lot of the protests in LA and the most recent ones of occupying the big blue building, well, kind of failed miserably. The question is then, it was a huge waste of resources, huge waste of time, etc., etc. Did he plan for this to fail? Well, more recently, he also had a big accident with his van. And again, some people like myself have been skeptical he even had an accident. So let's deal with that first. So he did show a few images of the van, allegedly. So he didn't really focus on it. He just gave a few images and it's like, oh, I had an accident. Well, I think we could concede it. There might be an accident. But yeah, those photos look really weird and definitely touched up by AI. Two things can be true. He had an accident. But for whatever reason, he decided to spice things up with uh, some help from the AI. Uh, is it totally fake? Don't know. We'll have to wait for him to provide more and more evidence because he says he can. So we'll have to wait and see. I mean... He said that the cops did stop him and they made some kind of report. So presumably there are witnesses. So we'll have to wait and see. So I'm a little skeptical he's telling the whole truth. But eh, whether he really had an accident, eh, don't really care. But there was definitely AI that was used in his photo. So I'm not sure why he's denying that or his chat believed every word he said. So let's move on to the main course, which is definitely shocking and alarming. That Streets LA and literally Michael, if you don't know who that is, Michael is connected to Surge, and he calls himself literally Surge. Although, why he does, because he used the name Surge Del Mar, but his name is Surge Gill. And nobody was like, oh my god, that's... He's used the name Surge Gill publicly many times. I don't know why he shifted in terms of his brand, but there we are. So what did Scotty have to say? Well, it's a little curious. He seemed to be trying to do several things. One is, say, the real reason he left L.A., was not due to the failures or restraining orders or his criminal history. It has to do with his nervousness about what Serge and Michael and Streets LA are up to. And this includes Mindy, one of the more nice protesters, probably one of the least worst protesters who emerged after uh, Aaron made this weird call to have a squirrel revolution, whatever that was. So he says that they've just been acting in a very funny way. And Perrin had a very odd secret meeting on zoom or someplace he got wind of it and he got very nervous now what is he nervous about i don't quite know he doesn't really specify he just says that there's been a lot of secrecy just a lot of cabal work in the background he's not saying streets la is a bad person he's just saying that perhaps streets as well as michael are being manipulated and influenced well influenced by who to what end well, he names 86 GOP. And who is that? Well, that is someone who emerged in the chat of a lot of these protesters and was very, very generous with the money and just gave these huge, huge super chats and just a lot of funding to the protesters. So Scott is positing a conspiracy theory that the protest movement has been captured and tamed by 86 and either Streets and Michael are going along with it, presumably for money, and or something more suspicious is happening. Well, I've wondered for a long time where Streets really is. It just seems a little weird that he keeps getting arrested, arrested, arrested. But despite having a criminal history of his own, he just gets out pretty immediately. And if you study these things carefully, there is a thing in LA where you can be providing information for the police and they are obligated to protect you. And it's really hard to look at their case file. And if you don't believe me, just look at the O.J. Simpson case. This happened with Ron Goldman. Apparently, Ron Goldman may have given the police some information. And to this day, we can't really verify what he said because they're legally protected. So many question marks about Streets L.A., the fact that he was not very active with the Occupy movement. Now, you might say Streets is a busy guy. He's an entrepreneur. He does other things besides filming the police and the Scientology stuff. Nevertheless, you do add it up. It is not 
at all clear whose side these protesters are on. I do think, and I'm going to probably regret this, I will make one big concession to Scott. I do agree Mindy seems like a nice person. So how she's involved in all this seems very weird, but apparently they're trying to silence her as well. So this is a really big conspiracy he's positing. He's not really providing hard evidence. He's just saying that he's very suspicious of 86, even though 86 was a big supporter of his. A lot of question marks. But what is emerging here is that the squirrels definitely do have a very hierarchical kind of pyramid structure that does come off like a Ponzi scheme. Now, whether this is a momentary lapse, we don't know. Again, I want to be fair here. These are protest movements you have to study seriously throughout history. Nevertheless, it is adding up that they are trying to control information, control people. And apparently Scott was worried that they were going to betray him. But why? Well, I guess given his record, uh, they have to give someone up. And presumably the federal officials have been contacting them that they have been breaking a lot of laws. And that is one of the weird things. If Scientology can find illegal stuff on you and they don't like you, they usually just go right after you and try to put you in jail or get you in trouble. But here, Scientology has been actually remarkably restrained. I mean, they could, but they don't try to really get rid of these channels. So it could be in this rare case, Scientology is working with the government, giving them tons and tons of information. And they're just waiting for the squirrels to do something and shut the whole thing down. And I guess best case scenario, Streets and Michael and the others are trying to negotiate with them, but they're willing to give some people up. And one of those people was Defender of Ants and Defender of Ants kind of suspected what they were up to and decided to leave before they could betray him. Now, I don't like Defender of Ants, but again, he is a human being. If out of self-preservation, he got himself out of that situation, well, I really can't blame him. But again, he is a bit of a plague and he really hurts people around him. So I can only guess who he's going to hurt in the next protest movement he's going to emerge in. Nevertheless, in terms of the squirrels themselves and how Streets has been leading them, there's been a kind of magical fairy tale that there is no leader. Oh, this is all organics. It's all spontaneous. Oh, no one's directing anything. It's like, no. Streets is lying to us. Aaron is lying to us. This is not an organic, spontaneous, individualistic movement. This is a very hierarchical, very, very authoritarian structure. Now, does it deserve to go away? I don't know, honestly. It, it, it's a very puzzling phenomenon. It definitely shows us that Streets and Michael and these others should not be trusted. They definitely do have their own agenda. Hopefully, Scotty will give us more information and evidence about this secret network of information. But it has happened before with Karen. Karen had a, her own network of information with Aaron, kind of controlling the narrative for the anti-Scientology movement. And it looks like they're doing it all over again. So it's all very suspicious and very alarming. But again, I have no dog in the fight. I'm not really connected to these people. So we'll have to see where it goes. But we kind of knew this was going to come, that this isn't a real genuine protest movement. It is just a bunch of celebrities attacking one another. And apparently they zeroed in on Defender of Vance as the one they could get rid of to maintain their own business, apparently.